this class and if you have then uh hopefully you'll be like oh wow <laughs> and if you haven't it'll, it'll still apply right so let me explain what mr bull did that they are real quick um mm -hmm. just want to make sure so it's 1864 right when he passed yeah yeah 18 born 1815 uh yeah like he didn't live 300 years right yeah all right um so let me go here and uh he had a very <clears throat> simple concept. He had the concept of something being true and something being false, on or off. Like that was the building block, right? So, uh, so he had this concept that. Uh, something could be true or false uh, one or zero in essence on or off right like that that was his thing right and uh, from from here you could build what are known as Boolean expressions with symbols, for example, uh, the and or the or or the not, right? So you'll hear the word truth tables mentioned. Like, so that's what he left us, right? Like, uh, truth tables. Let me. Uh, So if we had X and we had Y, then we would have some results, right? So for example, if X was true and Y was true, then the result would be true. And if X was true and Y was false, then this would be false. And if Y is false and Y is true, then this is false. And obviously false, false false so the key point here is that we have to have two truths to make an and true you can go to the football game if you clean your room and mow the lawn like you have to do those two things for the result to be true meaning go to the football game or something like that right you could like if you're young enough right now like your parents would tell you that if you're a parent then that would apply like you telling your, your kids right that's this is a condition you can get a raise if uh you work here for a year and your performance is at least very good right so, so then those two things have to happen for you to get a raise so that was the concept of the and logic okay and you'll see it a lot in programming and in computer science and then we also have the concept of war and again we have the x and some y and we get some result so if x is true and y is true then the result is true if x is true and y is false then the result is true if x is false and y is true then the result is true only if both are false is the result false right so if you mow the lawn or wash the car then you can do something right if you work here uh, one year or have exceeded expectations then you will get a bonus or a raise or whatever right so so that's how we can think of uh, those two concepts yeah digital fundamentals class yeah so uh once you take programming two then the final connection will be made like with ones and zeros but now we're just interested in true and false right that's And finally, the not, right? So that's the negation. So we can have some x and some result. 
uh, not true, then the result is false. Not false, then the result is true. So that's how this one works. And we can use uh, these uh, concepts to build, uh, to help us build conditions when we build if statements, right? I, I gave some very like high level examples, right? Like if you do this and that, then do this. If you do this or that, then do this, right? So that's how we can apply it to to programming. Uh, if there is uh, not true, meaning false, right? So there's some time, there are cases in programming where we want to negate something because it applies to that uh, problem we're encountering and then we can use the not piece, right? So how does, uh, how does this translate uh, to programming? And we can... Uh, show some examples let me see here uh, go here bring this piece here okay so just to to make sure that we drill the that I drill the point home right and let's look at and at a closer level right so we have the end so and means that if we have one false and everything else true then the result will be false right that's for end and for or it's the opposite we can have a lot of falses But one true, then the result will be true. So this is important uh, because when you're building complex conditions, then understanding how the truth table works will help help you structure those conditions, right? And we'll see that like in some examples. Right now, I'm just introducing the concepts. Uh, the book doesn't really like mention this like in detail, right? But I feel that as a freshman level course, it's important that we understand where this came from and more importantly, like the foundations, right? Uh, the truth table, uh, truth table, where are you? Uh, right here, our truth table, right? And we reinforce like what and is like you get at least one false and you have one million truths, the result will be false. And the opposite is for uh, or, like you could have one million falses, but one true, and then your result will still be true, okay? So that that's important to understand. Questions so far? Uh, okay, so we can translate this. Oh, let me see. Maybe there was a question here. Oh, no, no questions yet. Okay, so how does this translate to to coding? Right, that that's like our question, right? So let me. Uh, this is thirteen thirty seven. Oh, well, don't matter. Like we're just talking basic stuff. So uh, let me go back here. Foundations. We have and or not. Okay, so how does this apply in Python? So in Python, so we'll have a and or not. And uh, we'll test this. Believe it or not, that's an ampersand. Okay. <laughs> Can't really draw. So those symbols, right? And in Python, I think we can also use and or or not. We can use the actual the actual word, right? So what I want to do next is I want to show you with test cases that Python 
coded this into their system, like this truth table, and they coded this truth table, and they coded this concept of not into their programming language. So that's what we're going to do next. And after we do that, then we can start building some, uh, using them in some use cases that can help us, or problems that can help us understand how to use uh, this uh, this concept, or these concepts, right? So let me uh, stop the recording.